Hey, what's up everyone? Moira Crossing here, and today we're going to be going over the most important muscles to run faster, giving you a little bit more understanding of some of the key areas that I think are a lot of times overlooked when it comes to being able to train and improve your speed. This is obviously something that is very learnable when it comes to being able to sprint faster, run faster, accelerate better. And so we want to just go more in depth into some of the things that end up being really important. I do think the most underutilized and something that is a lot of times not trained correctly that will make you run a lot faster is the uh, anterior tibialis or ankle flexion so essentially the ability to lift up with the foot this is something that we'll do by training like that front side like i'll just put a kettlebell on the foot and just be able to lift up and down is probably the best way to be able to do you could also do circles I'll also have people do like hip flexion with it too so basically in this same position but just lifting up the knee as they're going through the same type of range with the ankle or maintaining that ankle flexion and the big thing with this is just the foot strike so being able to accelerate being able to strike the ground with more power with more force there's obviously a great carryover when it comes to the ground force and the stiffness within the ankles with how well you're going to be able to run and with you being able to train that anterior tib it really makes it so you can train that stiffness right because it's creating that ankle flex position as you are running which the higher you can get the foot or the toe as you're going through those front side mechanics i think the faster you're going to be able to run just that pure kind of correlation the height of the foot or the height of the toe and your running speed are going to be two things that will uh, directly relate to each other next one's going to be the hip flexors um, big thing with this is just going to be how well can you lift on the front side another reason why people are not very fast is because they're just weak in the hip flexor sometimes people will be like oh they're tight or they look stiff and they need to open up more and the hip flexors are typically weak when that ends up being the issue it could also be the core is weak as well i would say you want to be strong within the core as well as within the hip flexors in order to be fast some great things to be able to train within the hip flexors are just obviously hip flexion. I like to use a band and just be able to work on the extension there. I'll also work on being able to just kind of lift up the leg. Here we can see with the um, monkey foot, just being able to lift up the leg here. And you can see how this would directly carry over. You have a little bit of resistance and we're just working on the height of the leg as it's coming through in that front side. Ends up being really important. And this is also something to consider uh, that I was kind of thinking about as I was making the video is like I think it's really important to not necessarily not back squat but the thing about the back squat is that puts a lot more pressure on the lower back muscles which sometimes those would inhibit your ability to get full range of motion through your legs or through your hips so if you're too tight or too stiff in your lower back you're not going to be able to get as much height within the knees or within the legs in the front side mechanics. So uh, while it's important to build the lower body strength and that the squat helps in being able to build strength in that posterior chain, there becomes a point where you start to run out of the effective range of motion that you need to be able to run fast, which is why the front squat can end up being a lot better because it keeps that more upright position that's more similar to what we're going to see when you are sprinting keeps the length within the hip flexors keeps the posture at a good position is a little bit more of a training of like the mid back area uh, not going to be able to put as much weight on there but for a lot of people again when it comes to sprinting it's not always the strength within the lower half that is preventing the speed and so if it is a lower half strengthening thing if you're a little bit younger athlete then the back squat could be a little bit better. But if you are an older athlete that's already squatting, you know, well above 315, then it's probably not a leg issue if the speed is a problem. I mean, it's probably more of a range of motion or just how effectively we're able to utilize the ankles, the feet, and even the intrinsic foot muscles, which I think end up being really important when it comes to stabilization. So now we're talking about as the foot is striking the ground, we're at top speed, we're running fast. And when the foot is hitting the ground, we need to be able to very quickly absorb the ground contact and then be able to effectively push off. So this is assuming we're able to generate a good amount of power into the ground, right? We understand how to use the ankles. We've done training in the lower half to make it sort of strong 
in the lower half. So then when you are actually striking the ground, we have to be able to have a, a strategy and the muscle strength to be able to effectively absorb. And I think a great way to understand that is to be able to kind of shift your weight from the front inside. So you want to be landing as much on the front inside as you can. And then you're kind of shifting your weight to the outside to absorb and then shifting back to the inside as you are towing off. I, I get more in depth into some of this stuff when it comes to other videos and I could talk forever about sprinting. I don't want to get too sidetracked here, but here are some good ways to be able to train it. So you can see starting off just using a towel, scrunching up with the towel that makes it so you can get a little bit better proprioception of the foot, better understanding how to use the foot. I like to do different things with like RDLs, different balance type of exercises, both with shoes, without shoes, uh, working on the range of motion of the ankle and still being able to maintain the ability to control a wide variety of motions through the ankles, through the hips, makes it so you're going to be building up a lot of proprioception. Really with these intrinsic foot muscles, it's not like it's something that needs to be bulging. It's not a bicep. It's not a quad or a hamstring. It's a very small muscle. So you just need to be able to stimulate, stimulate it, activate it, control it is really the main thing. Um, and so even just controlling your individual digits is important. So being able to lift up the big toe and, and uh, while lifting up the big toe, pushing down within the little toes or vice versa, uh, lifting up with the little toes and pushing down with the big toe. Those are all small things that will end up making a big difference. Now, next one's going to be hip extension. I do think this is another important part of being able to run fast. And I think an important part here is we want to be able to work both concentrically as well as eccentrically to be able to contract, which means that we want to be able to understand how to contract the muscle, kind of knee flexion, as well as hip extension, knee extension, which is the lengthening of the muscle and still be able to have uh, the ability to access the hip extensors. No, notice I didn't say glutes. I didn't say hamstrings. It's the hip extensors. I'm um, also being able to do it closed chain, which means with your foot off on the ground, which is really the most important, but also open chain as well with the foot off the ground uh, ends up being important. So, you know, I like Nordics with this. I think this is probably the best way to be able to train it. I also like this here where we're doing just single leg um, hip extensions, being able to work on your ability to um, just bend again. And hope hip extension here is another good one. I'm not using a ton of weight here. I think in just being able to access the glute uh, is a great way to be able to build your strength. And then also here, just leg curls. I've been doing these a lot more lately, these leg curls. And I had a little bit of some asymmetries in my hamstrings. I uh, was getting really tight in my left hamstring. I um, mean, just by doing this a little bit more, it has really helped out a lot, which just means that I was getting a lot of stiffness in my hamstring just because of uh, a weakness, right? And that's a lot of times what happens is that your body starts to get a little bit tight uh, because you just don't have as much strength there. Another big one is going to be the muscles that strengthen your spine or straighten your spine. So, you know, essentially what we'll see is a lot of people when they're running, they'll start to hunch over and not be able to get into a good position within their their spine you know and, and if you just are in a bad position just in general whether you are squatting deadlifting sprinting jumping if you're in a bad postural position pitching throwing golfing you're not going to be able to be as successful and most of the time when you talk about bad position we talk about flex we talk about hunch we talk about being in a not good position within the shoulders and the way to be able to get better is really to be able to have a lot more extension or, or a lot better access to extension within the spine. So I like doing weighted supermans with this. I think this is a great one to be able to have and build great posture, especially as you're getting to your top speed. Um, I also like to do uh, these ones where you're just laying and kind of lifting weight up over your head. Uh, I think that's another good one. And then overhead squat, this one's a great one. Uh, this is just a bar, 45 pound bar, just being able to maintain a good upright position as you're doing that. Excellent when it comes to being able to, a muscle group that's important to train when it comes to running faster. And I do think that, and I'll get into it with shoulder extension. Um, there's a lot of times where people think, oh yeah, I don't really need to train my upper body when it comes to sprinting, whether they play soccer or they play uh, or run track uh, or you know just an athlete that doesn't end up needing more upper body strength whether it's in football or baseball and think that oh yeah i don't need to be able to train to be able to run faster and i would definitely disagree with that i think that you have to train your upper body muscles to be able to get faster i really like dips when it comes to that 
Um, I think that the triceps are a great way to kind of predict how fast somebody is, to be honest. If you are strong within your triceps, um, you're able to do pull-ups, you're able to do uh, pretty heavy overhead extensions or your shoulder extensions, then that's a good indicator of your speed. Here, I like these exercises a lot here to be able to help build your understanding of how to create more extension within the shoulder, whether you're doing it with just a stationary position or doing the change jumps. And then this one just is to work on the range of motion. Okay, you have to have a great internal rotation of the shoulder in order to get great extension. And so this is a good way to be able to train that internal rotation. This is obviously something I do with quarterbacks as well, but it's a good way to be able to also achieve that shoulder extension. So part of the reason why you don't have great extension or great speed is because there's not enough range of motion in the joint. Similar to, you know, you can see how open Noah Lyle's hips are right here. So similar to if you don't have enough range within the lower half, that's going to end up being a big uh, contributor to your sprinting. This is why the eccentric part of training the hamstrings is very important. So then we can get the length necessary to be able to run fast. But similar thing with when you're sprinting, you have to be able to get the length in order to run fast. Last one is going to be ankle extension. This one's probably the most critical when it comes to turnover speed. It's just that push off, right? And I use this example here where you could see, and I use this with people all the time. I've talked about this in a lot of videos, but we want to be able to get the foot to be pushing back or the arrow to be pushing back. We don't want the, the foot to be down. If, you're, if your foot's down, then you're really not pushing. Okay, and this is something that's going to be critical when it comes to acceleration as well as top end speed. A lot of times the reason people can't accelerate well, if you're an athlete that's saying, hey, I need to get better at my acceleration, my first 10, then you got to get better at ankle extension. You got to be better at pushing off the ground and being able to effectively push off the ground in order to really create great acceleration and great top speed. I do think broad jumps is a great way to be able to train this as well. I didn't go over broad jumps in these videos. I just did uh, mostly just ankle extension. Okay, similar to what I did with the kettlebell where I just worked on that flexion here. Single leg calf raises I think are fine. You could go bent knee as well. I do think weighted is a great way to go with this. You could see I have a little bit of a, of a bar here. You could also hold dumbbells. We could also go with two feet instead of just one foot. I'm just big on doing the uh, kind of isolated, right? Single leg stuff to me is so much better than doing two feet. When you do two feet, you obviously want to add more weight, but on single leg, if you can balance well, you know, adds that additional stability component, which translates to sprinting because most of the time that you are sprinting, uh, really all the time that you're sprinting, you're going to be on one foot. There's never a time when you're sprinting where you are, are on the ground with both feet. That's kind of the difference between the, you know, fast walking or jogging and sprinting is, or, or running is when you're running, you have one foot on the ground. Um, where when you're walking or, you know, kind of slow jogging, you end up having a time period, a slight time period where you have two feet on the ground. So when you're sprinting, you're going to have one foot on the ground. You might as well train in that position if you want to actually see the best results. And then I'd say the last one here, and this is something that I actually did when doing more of like a long distance presentation, um, is, is just the ability to breathe effectively. And so some of these things end up translating more to that longer distance but you know things like this with this two to two ratio where every two steps you're inhaling every two steps you are exhaling you know i think that could be effective also as you are kind of recovering being able to hold the breath in a little bit just kind of building up your ability to breathe more effectively um even when you're active recovering here after doing this long exhales four to six seconds um, is going to be a great way to be able to recover. Just want to be aware of the breathing when you are running. Work on nasal breathing, right? Make it so you're, you're just breathing within your nose. You can get a lot better when it comes to all types of performance when you have great control of your ability to breathe. And so I think that it would be wrong to go over all these different muscle groups and not include breathing because there's so many people that struggle with their ability to run because they don't have a great control of their breath. And so I uh, just wanted to add this in as a part of it's not just recovery, it's performance, right? That's the reality of the breathing for these like small little things, make it so then your lungs can start to be able to build up more strength and more power 
which will only make it so then you can create more explosiveness. It's the same thing when you're getting out of a squat or doing a, be a heavy bench press and you have that power in the lungs, in the core, you have the ability to create a lot of power through there. It makes a big difference uh, even during that acceleration phase. So uh, yeah, just wanted to go over a few things, a few exercises, a few muscle groups that are really important to train when it comes to being able to improve your sprinting. If you want to find out more, you can check out some of the links down below when it comes to our programming, how we can help you out when you are or if you are trying to sprint faster, run faster, improve some of your times, even if it's a long distance thing, if you're trying to improve your times in general, being able to be more efficient, understanding the training, understanding a program that's going to make it so you can get a lot faster, I think is the way to go. And that's what we're going to be able to offer you. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.